Hi everybody, my name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. Oh, I have a, a cool card for you today. I'm excited to show it to you. It's easy, but it is part of my Art of Christmas stamping series. Um, the set though that I'm using, I have an online class coming up and registration closes on the 21st. So you just have a couple more days left to register. Information is, well, I'll put the link down underneath this video or you can hop over to my website. If you're on my email list, then you've gotten some information about that. Um, and I'm gonna show you the cards. These are all on my channel. They are not cards that we will do in class because when I do an online class or an, uh, not so much in person, but when I do an, an online class, then you have to be in the class to see the projects. So these are the sets that I am going to use. So when I make the cards, you can do just the videos, you can do just the card supplies, and this time it also includes the pearl effects, the pearl enamel effects, and the um, gold leafing, because we're gonna make six projects together, and we will. I'm gonna use three sets. You can use those sets or you can use something similar that you have. So there's different ways you can register. So head to my website. Website. We're gonna use the Boughs of Holly. This one does have that gold leafing on it. So pretty. It just really kicks up the notch of your vintage looking cards. This one is one of the first art of stamping cards that I did for the Christmas series. Really pretty. Um, it has some embossing. We will do heat embossing in the class, which I'm gonna do that today because I am on a roll with the heat embossing. This is the Lights Aglow. Um, I think this one's called Christmas Lights, the bundle that we're using. All the information's on the set and on the website and all of these are on my channel already. And then the one that I did yesterday was Hope and Peace, Peace to You. That's these and this is the one that I did yesterday. And it has um, a snow theme. Today's card has a snow theme and just to go right along with it, we got a little bit of snow here, just a little bit. But you know, anytime you get snow in October, especially the middle of October, I'm like, hold up. <laughs> I love summer, I love fall. It will help our leaves be even super more beautiful this weekend that don't get knocked off. So we'll have to make some plans to go out and see some of those. So today I'm gonna use the Christmas Barn Bundle. This isn't part of the class, but um, the techniques that we'll use in class, I really wanted to put the pearls on this, but. I've been using them a lot, so I decided to back off. This is a really fun set, and the last time that I Zoomed with my card club girls, my card club is online, um, I asked sets that they wanted to see, and this was one of them, and I haven't made anything yet with it, so this is the first card today. So for this card, I am going to use a piece of soft suede because that's my color of the moment. And again, today I have used mostly colors of ink that were sitting on my desk. So at some point I'm gonna have to clean up and move those out of the way so I can go on to some different colors. And then I have a quarter sheet of shimmer white cardstock. And then I have a four by five and a quarter sheet of shimmer white that I ran through the music. If you still have the softly falling that has the snow, that would be really pretty on this one, but we don't sell that one anymore and I don't have mine anymore. So this is just run through and I am gonna run some stuff through on this one and I'll show you that in a second. So I have gone ahead and mounted the barn, which could be used year round. And I may try to do a quick um, card with it where you paint it so it doesn't have the snow on it, but this is definitely a snow card and the tree can be used year round. And the fence, there's a especially for making some masculine country cards. This doesn't have to be just a Christmas set, but I did mount these three on here together. And then I'm going to take my Versamark. And when you ever, when you do three at a time, I would suggest that you use your foam mat. That will help you. Um, but also make sure that you have inked really well because you know the Versamark is clear and especially on the photopolymer, sometimes on the red rubber, you can at least see the sheen of it but you don't want to have a hole in any of your images. So let's stick this over here so it gets everything on here and then I'm gonna use the rest of it for my other images. Make sure that you press everywhere again if you have the foam pad, that will help. And then I'm going to emboss it in white. Just going for that snow theme and I really want the um, little couple that's in the sleigh to be the focal point of this card. So this kind of helps this all be very muted. And it keeps that fun snow theme going. So I've got that. Always when you emboss, flick it over and I just 
Maybe you can see it. Give it a good hit and see all that fall off. You don't want your lines to be fatter than what the image is stamped. And if you haven't done a lot of embossing, white on white isn't necessarily the easiest thing to see. And I never know if it's showing up on camera until I go to edit it. Always wisest to hold it right here in one spot and then let it melt everything, especially like on this one, those corners of that tree, the corners of your bow. If anything doesn't melt, then when you go to paint it and especially run it through the die cut machine, it's just gonna come right off. And then you'll have a hole. Super important when you're doing sentiments. And then once you think you have everywhere, kind of twist it in a light and then if anything's dusty, it'll show up. Now the only thing, like I said, I wanted the focal point to be the couple in the sleigh. So I'm going to do those in memento. In my art of stamping series, I assume that you love all the things. But if you don't have all the things, that you want all the things. So I want to show you how to be able to use them. But we do use, we mix and match a lot with the Art of Stamping series. And not all of my cards are that. It's just been, I don't know, I maybe started it earlier in the summer. Uh, maybe it was last spring, I think, because I used the pomegranate. was one of the first ones I did with it. So now we have this. Let's bring my die cut machine over. Now, anytime you have heat embossed, it wrinkles your paper. So here's just a little tip. Go ahead and just do a few things at a time. Don't do all of them. So I will take the barn because that's a framelit. You can see how the paper's curled. The first time you send it through, it will flatten a little bit. So let's get our barn. And then here is a silo. So I'll put the silo up here. Does it make you wanna watch Joanna Gaines? Those have run through. You can see every time the paper starts to get a little flatter. So I'm gonna do the this image last because if these, the ones that are stamped on white, if they're not perfect, to be honest, it's kind of hard to tell. I'm going to get the fence, but the nice thing is with this fence, I don't need the whole thing. It doesn't fit on my card, so I'll put that much. Because every time you mount something on a card, it could be a little bit different. So maybe this time I'll get a little bit more than I did on my other one. But on the card I've already done, I just used a little section of fence. We have the tree, and we have our fence, and now we still need to get this and now you can see my paper's laying much flatter otherwise the chance you take is you're going to send it through and with the bow in the paper it's going to not cut straight the thing i love about this little wreath is it cuts the hole out of the center which is always fun and then one last little piece i'm going to use the little pond and mine's icy because it's snowy so i just have a piece of window sheet I could have run it through with another one, but I wanted you to see it, so I'll run that through. Now remember, this is art of stamping, so I'm going to use more than one little method of coloring these things in. So we have, this will be our focal point, and then I wanted everything else to just kind of, I wanted it to have color, and on this one, I'm gonna add a tad bit more color to my barn than I did on the first one, and I'm also gonna add a little bit of color um, to my water. Because you can see it has these fun like lines. It kind of gets lost on my white card. So maybe it will end up that we like the first one better. Maybe not. I'm going to use a water painter. So with the water painter, let's start with the lightest color, which will be the petal pink. Mine already has some, I've already filled it up. This is, I think this is the finest one. It could be the second tip. Either of those would work well. And for this, I'm using petal pink, and I just need ever so tiny bit to get their faces. Sometimes petal pink, if you get too strong, can be pretty pink. So you could always use a blend if you want more of a regular skin color. But it's cold out, right? So if they're a little pink, it's okay. Now I'm gonna take my soft suede. I should have put those in the order I needed them. And you can see I've already smushed that on here. I'm gonna take this, and for this one, I want it to have a little bit more water. So I'm gonna make myself a little palette of soft suede. And then ev I washed everything with a coat of it. And that was just so you, it will make the embossing powder pop a little bit. And originally I thought that I might do kind of like a sepia card and have no color. So this card kind of went places in my head. 
I'm not going to put any on the roof because I want the roof to look like it has snow on it. This is a little bit darker already than I've made. I made my first one. I decided I did want the barn to pop a little bit. And then I don't want it on the embossing powder. I want it to seep down in all those little boards. So just keep adding the water. And this is why I have used Shimmer White. If you use white or vanilla cardstock, you'll have to be careful with your water because your paper will start to pill. But the Shimmer White has a coating on it. I'm going to take it back over here. And then I want there to be snow on my fence. So I'm just going to brush that much just so you see the fence. And then I want that little bit of a sepia tone on my wreath and then on my leaf, on my tree. And anywhere the water is stronger when it hits and it seeps down into the paper and not onto the embossing powder, it gets a little bit darker. And let's go down here for when you color your little slight image you don't want as much water on here so kind of wipe it off because this is a tiny little image so let's go with our horse but I, I'm okay if he looks watercolored so if he's a little bit splotchy and not so artsy that's fine with me it's a watercolor look and, he, and again this is the focal point of our card so you want it to be painted pretty just adding if it is humid in your house and you try this, you'll want to take a second longer for your paint to dry. I mean, your ink to dry because sometimes a memento, it is, it's good to use with water, but I've noticed when it is muggy, it can um, run or smear. And not horribly. Sometimes it's just like, oh, I think that looks a little gray. And then you realize it's because a tiny bit of your memento smeared. So let's go over here. Let's give him some brown pants. Give her some brown hair. And that sh should be good for our soft suede. We may need to revisit it. Now I'm gonna go for early espresso. Again, I'm going to make a little pool over here for it, for where I'm gonna add it to my barn. And I didn't do this the first time, so this is a little variation of my other cards. So I'm gonna hit the doors. And these windows first and then I'm going to use what's left on my brush it's a fun little barn look at all those windows it looks like a wedding barn it actually kind of looks like the place where my niece just got married which was fabulously beautiful so it would have made a good card for that and I'm going to just kind of get the roof and then the chimney don't forget your chimney and if any of it smears, again, we're going watercolor. And then I'm just going to kind of brush this over to kind of give it some shading. If you get too much color, you can always take some, drip your brush over it and pick it back up. That looks a little bit stronger than my other one. And then we'll be able to compare the two. And then I also only used suede on my tree. I'm going to add that just along the trunk. And then let's get our sleigh. We'll do it in the suede. So it's, I mean, the espresso, sorry. If it gets too much water for the tiny little places, just kind of dry your brush off. And then I'm gonna do Old Olive. I did some shaded spruce on the other one as well, but this time I think I might just stay with the olive. We'll see. Let's smear this in here. Same over here on my tree. And again, I just want highlights of color. I don't want it to be olive. So just use the water to kind of push it down in the embossing powder. And then if you want, you can take something, even your finger, and kind of pick it back up. Now my finger is going to be dirty on the rest of the 
project. So let's go back over to our little people. Again, when you do the little people, very, very minimal amount of water on here. Let's get our Gaia green. This is why I did more green on the other, and then I thought it didn't really need it. Then we'll have her pants be green. If you know somebody that has a January birthday, this would be a fun birthday card because we don't just lay right in the, you could take the, the wreath off the barn. Let's go some basic gray. I'll do this again. I didn't put hardly any water on it. I'm just going to get all the straps on my horse. That'll make his happy gray. Just kind of filling in. This might not even be the same colors that I did before. I'll have her shoes be gray and his shoes be gray too. But I'm going to go pick up a lot of ink so it almost looks black. And then over to my silo. Put the water in here and can get kind of a wash. So it's not the same color as my barn. And then the door of the silo. And then we have real red. And again, you don't want a ton of water. These are tiny little spaces. And if the red bleeds, it's a harder color to pick up because it is nice and bright. Especially because I'm grabbing right here from where I put the ink refill in. And I like that way that pops. So I am going to leave that a little bit stronger of a color. That looks pretty good. My barn is way darker than my other one, so we'll see if you like a darker light or if it doesn't really matter. Now we just need to stick this together. This is the only thing that might be a little bit wet. The rest of it's pretty dry to work with. No ribbon on this card, no ribbon and, and no embellishments really. We're gonna use the Snowfall Puff Paint because obviously it's snow. Go ahead and mount everything on here, and then that way the paint will be where it wants to be. Because we're going to splatter some of that snowfall on here. And the snowfall puff paint does require heat. So I want to make sure that when I heat this again, that there's enough adhesive on here that it is not going to curl up anywhere. So we have that there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my barn on first. I do like the, a little bit of a darker color. I use my dimensionals for this. And I have some pieces where it is the edge. Love those edges of the, don't ever throw that away. It's actually, if we had just giant pieces that were like this, that would make me happy. I like the big pieces. It's a whole lot faster to put on two big pieces than to put on four of the other ones. And all of this, I'm not going to push super hard. So I've laid that there, but then that way, if I don't like it, I'll be able to lift it all up. And then once I've decided that I like everything, then I will um, go back and push everything down. Now here is our, our pond. And to put the adhesive on it and have it not show, I'm going to put adhesive only under the um, sleigh people, <laughs> the sleigh riders, I guess. I was, oh, what? not a word I say often. So let's stick these on here. Give them about that much. And then we can put this here. And then that's probably going to lay. Yes, yeah, so I don't need another one. 
I did have a little bit of an issue with you only want to put a thing over a dimensional over here. Otherwise it's too high for right there. Now this is something I didn't do on my other. Remember I said you couldn't see the water very well. So let's go back to one color, but I couldn't do it till I was ready. This is pool party. And again, ever so slightly, I hardly want it to be blue. So get that water in there. And now I know my pond's going to be about right there. Can get more than that. And then I think it'll help pop that water. Or maybe it doesn't make any difference. We'll see. Pull this off. So here's a little tip for you. You saw that this piece is going to lay on that. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of adhesive there. Again, I'm not going to push very hard on this yet. In case I need to move something. Then we have our tree. Oh yeah, now you can kind of see that. And in fact, I can stick a little bit more color under there if I want it to go exactly where I need it to be. Put that there. The silo is a little dark. I like my lighter silo better. Maybe not, it holds it on its own, I guess, with the darker colors. Now for the fence, you don't need the whole thing, so. Let's see, my scissors buried under all the mini ink pads I used this time. So I'm just gonna snip this off here and use that much fence, maybe a little less. Oh, that goes. And last time I mounted this all before I put it on here and I really want it to extend over. In fact, I cut the, this is a smidgen under um, four and a smidgen under five and a quarter because I wanted a little bit more of my soft suede to show. You could use glue if you want. Put that there. Add our wreath. See, if you don't want it to be a Christmassy, Christmassy card, then just leave the wreath off. I am going to get a tad more of this, and then I'm going to go back and press everything on. But now that we know exactly that this is where it's going to be, just kind of lift that up. And add that because typically well lots of people here this morning may have had snow on their lake but the water color still shows right so we have that now I'm going to take the snowfall puff paint and I'm gonna use this little piece here for a, just a palette I used it before you can see that there's none left so it goes away just put some here because this, if you squirt it directly on your card, can be a bit overwhelming. This is an old. Let me see if I'm using the wrong one. Yeah, it's this one. This is an old Stella, so it's empty. It may have a tiny bit more in there, but for the most part, it's empty. So I'm going to take this. Yeah, it's the one I used because it's a little stiff. You'll want to clean it off after you did it, but I didn't clean it off yet because I knew I was going to do another one right away. So just kind of draw it on the line in the line there. It's easier to go back and add more in a minute if you didn't get enough than to put too much and have it be overwhelm your design. So we'll get some here. Maybe a tad over here. The nice thing if you do these on white and your bat your image your thing is white, then you can um do to those edges where the die cut doesn't cut out all the way. Get some down here along the fence. And you don't want it on the on the here because obviously the or the horse is not walking through water. So sometimes when you're doing nature designs, think through how it would look for real because that does help make it look more realistic. Because he would not be trudging through, and it does have the snow on the bottom. If you want, you could cut some of that off. I wasn't that bothered by it. Now I'm going to take my Stella. And I'm going to get, get some um, snowflakes on here. But try not to get it on your people. Because you don't want a big old splatter right on their face, right? So I'm going to take this here. So pick up a bunch of this. And it does drip. So you want to be careful. And then just kind of put it right where you want it to go. And flick it off. And 
And by using the Stella, if any comes off, that's okay. It'll just be clear and sparkly. It does have a tendency to come back on you, which I noticed because I have a black shirt on. You can kind of see some of it. It washes off. Just wash it off as soon as you're done. Make it a little bit more. Don't be if you bought this to use it, right, guys? You didn't buy it to save it, to find it hard in your cabinet in three years. So I don't know how long it takes to dry up. But I've had this one. This is the one I got last year, and it's down to here. And I've made a bunch of cards, and we did use it at my camp, so last year. I'm trying to get a little bit on the edges of my brown, because you can see it, but... It, Kind of has a life of its own. There we go. Now, if it's just you and you're making this at home, take it, just give it maybe five minutes to kind of set because then it doesn't puff quite as much. And on this card, we're not going for super puff. Now, if you're doing Santa's beard or something and you want it to be super puffy, then you can put a whole bunch of here. You can squeeze it directly onto your card. I'm kind of talking to give it time and then just get that off of there. And then I would just take this, you can use a paintbrush, but if you have old Stella's, save them. They're the best brushes, but just wipe it off with some water. This is why I put the extra adhesive on the back because I didn't want any of this stuff. And some of it may lift off, so you may want to go back and re-adhere. see that it's kind of curled up places where it got warm. I don't want to smash it right now because I don't want the puff paint to re-smash. You can see right here, it kind of got a glob of snow. I'm just going to pick that up with my scissors. And now that it's not puffy, it's not as obvious. So just take your adhesive. Again, I'm going to, if it's you, let it sit 10 minutes before you do this so the Puff paint gets hard. None of we don't have a ton of puff paint on here, but just go back and lift them all up. You can smash your things on here. This kind of stood up a little bit, but it doesn't have much. Got a little bit of snow on it, but not so much. It covered up the design. So here is the darker. Everything on this card's a little bit darker than on my first one. So this one, this is much more the focal point. I like them both. Um, I like the silo better. I got a little heavy with the color on the silo. So there you go. If you are interested in taking my online class, then just look down below the video and you'll get the link to my website. While you're there, you can sign up for my email. And then you always know what's going on. This morning there was a clearance sale. And so I emailed everybody, I don't know, at 6.30 I saw that they had um, refreshed the rack. It took me probably another 20 minutes to get out of bed and get a cup of coffee before I could send the email. But I like to keep you abreast of everything that's going on. Everybody have a great one. If you have any questions, let me know. Bye.